new Iowa State head coach, Tim Floyd, makes his Big 8 television debut today, and look what he's done with the Cyclones. With a focus on caring for the ball, his senior-dominated Cyclones have been scoring at a blistering pace while knocking an amazing 17 points a game off their opponent's scoring average. All that, plus an intense coach Floyd, has been parlayed into a school-best record of 12-2. and two. Now, far from being a new kid on the block, Kansas coach Roy Williams has his plan. The plan? Get good players and play them in the system. Mix the young and the old together. Senior center Greg Ostertag plays side-by-side -side with true freshman Rafe LaFrance and sophomore Scott Pollard, giving the Jayhawks tremendous power inside. It's a January game that could have great impact in March. Kansas and Iowa State meet today in the pressure-packed atmosphere of Iowa State's Hilton Coliseum. And this is what it's all about in the Big 8. Welcome inside the Hilton Coliseum. It is wild here in Ames. The Cyclones just at the floor. They're here to play the high-flying Jayhawks from the University of Kansas in a big game early though it is in the Big 8. Hi, everybody. I'm Brett White. Our Alums this afternoon is John Sunbull. Good to be here with you, John. And it may sound silly in the second game of the conference season to say big game, but it's big. Well, how more exciting can it get? Second ball game of the year in the Big 8. How important can it be? This senior-laden ball club from Iowa State feels like they have to win at home in order to stay in the Big 8 race, though it's early. Kansas comes in here. They won at Missouri. Now they want to steal one and win here in Hilton Coliseum. They could really send a message to the Big 8 if they win here on the road again today. Where you want to look today, look inside. A lot of very talented big people in there on the Iowa State side. Lauren Meyer, a man to watch. Well, Lauren Meyer is the kind of player who has to play well tonight. He's coming off 29 points from St. Louis game. What he does, he can post up. He needs to play well against Ostertag, but also we'll see if Tim Floyd takes him away from the basket because he can shoot the 12-footer. He has to stay out of foul trouble. That's important for this Iowa State ball club. And it's well documented that Kansas has a huge, very talented front line, but the guy that makes that engine hum is a point guard. You have to love good points. Point guards. There may be none better in the whole country besides Jock Vaughn. It's nice to have a player that can run the show. The nice thing about Jock, what I like, he knows when to push it, when not to push it, which player should get it. Maybe he should take it. He does everything that a coach wants him to do. That makes his Kansas ball club awfully good, even though he's only a sophomore. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. Here's how Roy Williams will start him for the Jayhawks, ranked third in the nation right now. The way he's been going lately with Sean Pearson up front, the freshman Rafe LaFrance back in the state of Iowa for his first appearance as a collegian, the senior Greg Ostertag in the middle, Jock Vaughn, a tremendous point guard with Jared Hass at the shooting guard. Now, Iowa State's lineup has been somewhat up in the air. Here's the way we understand the Cyclones will go today. Fred Hoiberg and Julius Mikalik at the forward that could change. Lauren Meyer in the middle. Pearl Beecham will start at one guard in place of Gary Kays along with J.C. Holloway. John Sunbold, they changed their starting lineup recently and it seemed to jumpstart the Cyclones and Tim Floyd is going to stay with somewhat a different lineup here today. Although Mikalik is in there. One thing about Beecham, he adds firepower right off the bat. Here we are in Hilton Coliseum. You can see us back. Okay, John, what about the ball game? Tim Floyd and Roy Williams matched up here. Good ball clubs both. Tim Floyd really, really pumped up and working his team hard in practice. Well, he has to. He has the senior ball club. These guys have been here now together four years. They've worked together. They've played together. They've lived for this moment. Ames, Iowa is excited. They have a chance to win the Big 8 Conference. First time ever since they've been in the Big 8 Conference. KU comes in with an outstanding ball club. They handled Missouri easily the first half down in Columbia. They play well. They're big. They're strong. Tim Floyd said yesterday, we can't make mistakes. We have to handle the basketball. We can't get in foul trouble. We want to do the things well. When you have seniors, you rely on them, especially in your home building. Two coaches who really believe in solid, fundamental, man-to-man -man defense. Take care of the ball offense. Run when you can, but... I wouldn't be surprised to see surprises here today. Well, we watched a little bit of practice this morning. Tim Floyd, known for man-to-man -man defense, but he was throwing some little things in the mix this morning. Things that we may see today, and the ball is up. The kick is down to Hurl Beecham, and the Cyclones get the first possession. J.C. Holloway, the point guard. Not a scoring threat. He has to take care of the ball for Iowa State. You're going to see Meek Leak and maybe Lauren Meyer pop away from the basket just to draw the big Kansas players out. It opens the lane up for Hoiberg to drive the basketball. There's a cut. Pearl Beecham had it knocked away in there. You 
you have to be aware of the shot blockers. Ostertag has been outstanding this year. Only 18 blocks shy of being the all-time Big 8 leader. What he will do is chase the basketball. That should free Meyer up to attack the glass. Ostertag's 42nd block of the year. Hoiberg from way outside, and it wouldn't fall. Ostertag to Vaughn, and here come the Jayhawks. No score. Look at Vaughn push it. Ostertag is going to take it. They left him alone. He missed, and down inside, the French had it, and it was taken away. Well, you see the strategy already. Iowa State has said Ostertag can take that one. Roy Williams probably not happy unless you make the basket. But Iowa State did not block out first possession. They got lucky to get the ball back. Great for the French travel. Here we are now. Interesting story. Here's a kid with a ton of poise. First of all, you, you have to like the way he has played all year, but he was down inside defending that time, and it was Iowa State that made the first mistake and turned it over, and a, and a senior that did it. LaFrenz comes back into his home state. Outstanding player, 16 rebounds against Missouri. He can do everything. Jared Haas and the Jayhawks have the first two points. Jared Haas is a tough, hard-nosed player. He can shoot the basketball. So the Jayhawks grab the early lead. Oster tag defending Meyer now. Entered to see how Jock Bond plays Holloway. He can play almost a center field when he goes away from the basketball. Mika Lake and the Cyclones. Are they tight? No, no. We'll find out in a couple of minutes maybe. Right now they're missing the early stuff. And there's a foul on J.C. Holloway, the point guard. Jock Bond never hesitated. He just took J.C. Holloway straight to the bucket. This young man, his decision making is outstanding. As he looked up the court at half court, he had determined that there was a lane. And he took control of it. He went right to the basket, drew the foul. Jock Vaughn has done a nice job of attacking and not attacking. When it's not there, he'll pull it back out. 28 assists and only three turnovers the last three ball games. He's really what makes this Kansas ball club work well. Just a sophomore already at 200 assists. Jack Vaughn, a 77% free throw shooter with a miss. Kansas people tell us that this club is the most closely knit club, that the, the most close knit club that they've ever had in, in recent memory there. And they say that Vaughn of Sopler is really the leader in the whole thing. Well, it almost makes sense. He's a point guard who has control. He's young, but really the whole ball club is young. And he's on the floor most of the game. So the Jayhawks have a quick lead, and Iowa State has knocked the back end out of the KU Plus, and Julius Nikolic sticks it. And that's a big hoop for Mikulik. If he gets on track, he can cause a lot of problems for the Jayhawks. There they are. He finds Ostertag to shoot it from there. He did once and missed, and he doesn't take it this time. Has will from there and nail it. Well, Hoiberg's going to have to stay up on him. You'll see him face guard Hass, try him not to let him catch a basketball. Freddie's going to have to stay in Hass. Once he gets on a roll, he's awfully good shooter, and then he opens the inside game up. John, you were a great shooter. Jared Hass really has that great shooter's mentality, doesn't he? He does. He looks for the basket. He gets his head on the rim and his eyes up quickly when he catches a basketball. The Prince with a rebound. Jacques Vaughn with a good move, and the Jayhawks are off to a good start here at Hilton Coliseum. They're leading 8-2 in the early going. One thing you want to do on the road is quiet at the crowd. This crowd was into it early, but they're a little bit, they're on their seats now, and that's a good thing for Kansas. Mika Lake, LaFrance well, out covering. Hoiberg. Meyer has Holloway. He takes the shot. It was shot clock was inside 15 seconds. Mika Lake with a step back and he's fouled. Interesting sequence there, John. J.C. Holloway is not a shooter. The point guard for Iowa State getting one point a ball game, but the clock was down to 15 seconds. He'll take that shot. And, and he has to take that shot. He has to make the defense honor him or it's too easy defensively. That time the miss, you saw two Iowa State big players attack. Ostertag had to play 2-1-1, one, one, couldn't get the job done. Got the foul instead. Mikalik to the line. He has four points. And Ostertag clears the miss free throw. Iowa State, a great free throw shooting team. They just to be, seem to be shooting it a little bit tight in the early going here. Iowa State now in a box and one somewhat. Triangle and two, actually. They're going to guard Haas, and they're going to guard Pearson, the two shooters. They're going to triangle inside, guard man-to-man, -man, see what they can do. Holloway defending Haas that time. Haas traveled. Now Vaughn will pick J.C. Holloway up at midcourt. Sophomore point guard from Nickerson, Kansas here for Iowa State. Well, look out, they're picking Mikuli way outside, 35 feet in the basket. What you have to be able to do against Kansas is break down their defender one-on-one. -on -one. If you can't do it, it becomes a long night. Mikuli works against LaFrance, and he's going to be called for the walk. LaFrance, pretty good solid defense in there again. The 
ball hasn't been inside as much perhaps as anticipated. Now and Ostertag is out. Scott Pollard is in. Another big body for KU. Pollard, 6'10", quicker than Ostertag. And probably one with better offensive skills. He can go down low. He can shoot the right hook, the left hook. Very important and very valuable on the block. Much more physical player seemingly than he was last year. There's LaFrance working against Lauren Meyer Lowe. And he's got the double team trying to save it. Throws it away. Beecham and Holloway against Vaughn. Beecham, great piece to J.C. Holloway. And look at Vaughn get it right back for Kansas. Jayhawks by two, by five, as Sean Pearson lights one up from three-point range. Well, that's one of the players they're supposed to guard. Hass and Pearson outside. Forgot a blown assignment, three-point shot. B.J. Williams set to check in for Kansas. Hoiberg all alone. Hass runs at him, but a three stuck by Fred Hoiberg. Hoiberg with his first points of the ball game. It's a two-point lead to the Jayhawks. Vaughn inside to Pollard, and the Jayhawks answer quickly. Well, it may be too easy for K Kansas right now. Tim Floyd said we have to pick up Jock Vaughn at half court. We have to contain him. Right now, Vaughn's having his way getting the ball down to the paint area. Does that mean that we might see Barry Hayes in the ball game rather quickly to play defense on Vaughn? It could. Mikali down inside. Meyer tough against Pollard, and Pollard got a hand on it. LaFrance to Vaughn, and the Jayhawks looking for a break. Get it from the deep corner. Lauren Meyer with a rebound. Kansas playing defense all over the floor. Left-handed move down inside from Nicolay Grand Park. LaFrance with the rebound. Tried to get it to Pollard and did. And Vaughn is going to take it to the rack and hits. Boy, the pace of this ball game, back and forth. Vaughn, he's smiling. He missed an easy one. Outstanding ball game early. Okay, the pace, as you mentioned, is really something. We have a break here. 14.58 left in the first half. Been something in the early games. Well, and the pace, you can see the field goal percentage, 71% already for Kansas. That pace will favor the Jayhawks because of Jock Vaughn. He can push it. If he finds easy shots for his teammates, they'll shoot the lights out. If the players looked a little fatigued, just four minutes into the ballgame, three minutes in, actually, don't be surprised. It's not only the pace. That mental anxiety, the tension of getting the game started can take a toll early, too. Well, the emotion of this kind of ball club, I think it's a huge game for Iowa State. Kansas has been in big ball games already this year. They defeated UMass. They went on the road and beat Missouri. They're used to this. They're a little more settled right now than Iowa State. They played at Indiana. Iowa State had a big game in Iowa and won big. About the only really big game that they've been in like that this year. Williams for Kansas. Now Iowa State... Gary Kays on Hass, and Hass just got hit in the face as the shot goes up. John Vaughn just, John Vaughn just stuck a three, and Hass looked like he got hit in the throat, perhaps, before the shot went in the air. Derek Hayes, James Hamilton have entered for Iowa State for more defensive purposes, not so much on the offensive end. Derek Hayes last year was all Big 8 freshman team. So Hass is going to go to the bench. Greg Gurley, a senior, off the Kansas bench to replace him here. 16 to 9, Kansas by 7. As Jacques Vaughn knocked down a three point shot. He has six points in the early going here. A Holloway against Vaughn. Goldberg to Hayes. That's Billy Thomas defending Hayes. He's in the Jayhawk lineup. Holloway fouled by Jacques Vaughn. He says, Yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> Fred, you want to see a kid shoot it? Watch his Billy Thomas. His release is absolutely flawless. The next four years in the Kansas Jayhawk uniform, he is going to really score a lot of points. 6'4 freshman out of Shreveport, Louisiana's Loyola Prep High School. Kansas found him. Roy Williams was looking at tape to look at another kid and said, I really like Billy Thomas. Get me some more tape. Liked him, recruited him, signed him. Gary Hayes with a stick back. Kansas up five, 13.54, left in the first half. Ostertag left alone by Mikulik, took that shot his first possession, now he's turned it down twice. 
Sets a screen for Vaughn. That's a huge screen. He's 7-2. And good. Another three for Jacques Vaughn. He's in a pair of trays. He has nine points. And he's taking care of business. Well, that makes Kansas that much more difficult to defend when the point guard can hit open jump shots. Holloway doing the best he can meekly, trying to play center field defensively for the Cyclones. One thing about shooting over a Greg Oster tag screen, you have to have room to do it. <laughs> I would hope so. He's 7-2. Seven 7-2 two. Seven to two run for the Jayhawks here. Now make a look back inside with his six points. That's that old European step. Roy Williams wanted travel, but in Europe, they allow that. Mr. Meekley got away with one. He's a finesse player down inside. Now Jared Haas set to return for KU. So is Rafe LaFrance. And C.B. McGrath is going to come off the bench for the Jayhawks at the point guard. And Jock Vaughn might get an early rest here. He's playing a lot of minutes for Kansas. There's Ostertag. They're just letting go out there. Knocked away by the Cyclones, J.C. Holloway. Kansas basketball in front of the Cyclone bench. Lord Meyer returns for Iowa State. They got him a little bit of rest in the early going. Well, and it's interesting to watch Kansas offense. They set a lot of picks to free up a lot of bodies. What that does to a defender, it wears you out. You become tired of guarding people. Kansas consistently puts bodies on you to free the shooters up. And not a knock on C.B. McGrath, but a little break for J.C. Holloway now. He doesn't have to chase his job Vaughn all over the place. He's matched up with a freshman now who just doesn't have the abilities and the speed of a Jacques Vaughn. And we'll see how Kansas handles the basketball. Billy Thomas. Whoa! <laughs> Way outside. And it's... <laughs> Shot clock had ran out, and Billy Thomas had to launch one. Great LaFrance had the rebound, but it was too late. The shot clock had expired. Cyclones down six. McGrath defending J.C. Holloway. C.B. McGrath from West High School in Topeka, Kansas, just a few miles from Lawrence. Hoiberg, nice quick touch pass. Meyer against Ostertag, moved him back and missed the shot, and Ostertag got the rebound, and Meyer almost fouled him. Almost fouled him, and he needs to make that shot. Pass, missed it all. Hoiberg. Both clubs in a bit of a slump. Meyer again, does he want the shot again against Ostertag? He does, and he buried that. Came right back to it. This Lauren Meyer is tough on the post. He can really has good offensive abilities and good moves. Oster tag with a walk. Now Iowa State with a surge. Back within four, and the crowd really getting into it. Tim Floyd, the Cyclone coach, looking on as his club has come from eight back to within four now. I think anytime you play a game, you know what the score is or the, the contents of it. If you're a senior ball club like Iowa State, you don't become frustrated with the score early. You know there's a long way to go. They need to shore it up defensively. Kansas has done what they've wanted to on the offensive end. Offensively for Iowa State, keep working, keep moving the basketball. Iowa State, this Hamilton again. They're Meyer after Oster tag again, and Oster tag changed the shot. Tip try, no good. And back up with it again was James Hamilton. Well, and I tell you what, Ostertag is doing a good job on defense. Well, right now what's happening, Lauren Meyer, when he goes to the ball claim, that time it was Pollard on the defensive end, and he had help. Once he has help, the men there guarding from Iowa State attack the glass. You saw Hayes, you saw Hamilton attack the glass, kept the ball alive, got the rebound, Hamilton goes to the free throw line. That is Pollard and not Ostertag out there. That's a little tough to confuse. Ostertag at 7-2 <laughs> sitting on the sideline. That free throw good from James Hamilton. His first point of the ball game, he just came off the bench. Maybe that tells you how good a job they all do down inside. And they keep the rotation pretty much free. They just keep rotating them in. And that's Pollard, and now we have a foul on Lauren Meyer. And that's a bad foul. Tim Floyd did not want Lauren Meyer to get any silly fouls. That's a silly foul when you reach in. It's only his first, but it's a bad one. It's a dumb foul. Possession's already had by Kansas. Don't stick your hand in there. Iowa State has run off five unanswered points. Greg Gurley for Kansas. They leave Williams on out there. Down inside, they try to get it to Pollard. It was deflected. James Hamilton had a hand on it. Williams off target. Jason Kimball for Iowa State. And a hold 
it up and set the offense. Simple passing game for the Cyclones, a lot like Indiana. Hoiberg takes Grody to the circle and backs it in. Hoiberg with five. One point lead, Kansas. When you're the mayor, the bank is open on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. John Pearson. Hoiberg got him. First foul on Fred Hoiberg. The intensity is there. Now the ball clubs are taking it down inside, and you can really see the intensity. Vaughn makes a good pass. Pearson gets away, put him between the leg. Hoiberg thought he had all ball. Everyone thought he had all ball. Referee calls it. A little body down low. Seven straight Iowa State points. John, it seems like the focus now has shifted from the three-point line to the inside. Well, it's funny because Tim Floyd kept talking about we don't guard inside the paint very well. But the points so far for Kansas, Vaughn has nine points couple three-pointers. Pearson hit a three-pointer. They've made the jump shots. Now they can work. They can bring Iowa State out a little bit and try to punch it down low. Pearson has four points. That one wouldn't drop there. Warren Meyer rebounds. Cyclones down two. A chance to tie it for the first time since 0-0. And Roy Williams has three players set to come back in. LaFrance, Ostertag, and Jared Haas. And Hoiberg for three. And the Cyclones have the lead. Hoiberg's feeling it. You can see it in his eyes when he catches the basketball. He's right to the hoop. He has eight. And the Cyclones have their first lead of the game and listen to the crowd. Gurley got a screen from Hunter. Vaughn, penetration. And the dish out of bounds and a foul call. Great intensity on the defensive end, but what happens? A good player makes the good play for a teammate. Let's take a look at this MCI proof positive replay. Nice defensive stop right now by the Cyclone, but when you have a point guard like Jock Bond, he can get in the paint. He draws bodies. B.J. lost it, but he was pushed from behind. It's important to have people that can break down the defense one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. Jock Bond has done it successfully so far this first half. Foul was Jason Kimbrough's first. Oster tag to LaFrance for KU. Jared Haas. One on one against Derrick Hayes. Hoiberg hit the deck, and Pearson's alone down inside. Sean Pearson has six. And K KU back up. KU does a nice job of spreading the court so that cutters are open when they go to the basket. That time, Pearson got an easy one. Hoiberg right in the middle of the crowd for KU, and a blocking foul on Kansas. That's LaFrance on the deck. And he'll be called for the blocking ball. You know, one thing scouts want to know about Freddie Horberg, can he put it on the floor? What an outstanding player. Good ball fake. Head and shoulders and the ball, and now he takes it to the glass strong. Put it on the floor, drew the contact. Well, that was Ostertag in there again. One thing about the presence of a shot blocker like Ostertag, even if he doesn't get the ball, he changes so many shots down there. Changes shots and makes players go away from the basket. One way to attack a, a shot blocker is to go right through them. See if they'll make great shots. Hoiberg hits the first, shooting nearly 88% from the free throw line. Nine points for Fred Hoiberg, the 6'4 senior from here in Ames. They call him the mayor because he's so popular. A couple of lead changes now. We have the first tie there for a second, the 22-22. Iowa State up one, 9-23. Kimbrough a little quicker defensively on Vaughn. Pearson against Hayes. Hoiberg has Hats. Meyer defending Ostertag down inside. They take it to Ostertag and the spinning jumper good. First two points for Craig Ostertag. That's a big basket. Almost divergence. When they're running the passing game, everyone's cutting and moving out, and all of a sudden Ostertag steps into the paint, gets an easy basket. Now we're into the stretch of the game where the lead is changing hands all the time. Eric Hayes blocked by Ostertag. That's one thing I think Tim Floyd, they'll address in the timeout. Hayes posts up. Ostertag leaves his man. That time it's Lauren Meyer. He just leaves his man to go make the block. Meyer's got to be aware of it. Teammates have to be aware of it. You might just be able to throw it up off the glass and let Meyer go get it. That time, Jock Vaughn rotated down on Meyer, but Meyer can go over the top of Jock. John Pearson out. Billy Thomas back in. And that time, Hayes off balance tried to throw up a left-handed hook and couldn't get anything on it. KU, Jared Hess flashing the baseline. Meyer went up after him. The ball down to Julius Mikulik for Iowa State. 38 left in the first half. Iowa State down by a point. Kimbrough to Meyer and LaFrance is holding it. First second foul on Lake LaFrance. 
I think a little mismatch here, and maybe one of the reasons LaFrance, he's a freshman. He does a lot of good things. Myers is a senior. Kind of puts his body on. LaFrance holding, holding. One thing about Lauren Meyer, he's been around the block. He's been here a few times. He knows all the tricks. He's going to work on the friends being a freshman. And Lauren Meyer, you remember last year in the car accident, I'll tell you what, he missed a lot of basketball, and he is anxious to play this ball game. It happened just about a year ago today, four days from now. Hoiberg with a miss. LaFrance has not been able to get involved in the offense so far for Kansas. Mikalik defending him down inside, and they kept the ball away from him pretty well. Look at LaFrance working down in there right now. Mikalik has him front and has to the bucket. What? Tell you what, Mikalik is more involved in this game than I've seen him in a lot of ball games. There are times. Hulo tries to sometimes disappear, but tonight he's here this afternoon. He's hit some big shots, and that was a terrific block. Julius Mikaly with a block and good defense. Now he takes LaFrance baseline, and look at Ostertag go up and stuff it his third block of the ball game. It is 24-23, Kansas here 749 left one point ball game Kansas got it off to a really nice start and Iowa State has answered well Kansas got off to a good start they got good shots lately they've turned the ball over already six times so far in the ball game that's a three from Jason Kimbrough Iowa State with their biggest lead at two points Jacques Vaughn Kimbrough defending the lob a little too tall down inside, but right back to get it was B.J. Williams, the sophomore from Wichita, Kansas. Lack of communication on the defensive end. A little back pick set up for B.J. Nice little play out of the timeout by the Jayhawks. Tie ball game. Iowa State trying to move it quickly. Looked at Hoiberg. It wasn't there. Now Mikali defended by Williams. And Pollard got Lauren Meyer from behind. First foul on Scott Pollard. Team fouls, Iowa State with four, Kansas with six now. This year, referees putting a lot more emphasis on the hand checking. What you need to do as a big man, use your lower body, ride him out with your knee and not your hands. We've had two ties and five lead changes. Tough shot. Right? Yeah, that, that's big time, Fred. That is a big time move, big time shot. When you're that big, that mobile, and go over seven footers, that's a big play. You know what? Lord Meyer had some elevation that time. He's 6'10, he got up there. He has four points. Cyclones by two. Jared has look at the tight defense. Derek Hayes all over him. Great pass. Outside. Oh, yeah. Scott Pollard. Okay, you had the great answer. You want to run offense efficiently. There it is, as well as you can draw it up. John, how many times have you seen a KU big man in the last few years catch the ball in a position to shoot it right there? They don't take a dribble to that. 22nd time out here. 626 left in our first half. 26 left in the first half, tie ball game, 28-28. Fred, you talk about the, the offensive movement that Kansas has. What they'll try to do is they're moving so much that once in a while, all of a sudden, that big man, they're setting a pick away from the ball, away from the ball, away from the ball. Then they step in. They get great position, their big man, down the low post. We saw it last week in Columbia, Missouri. They would get great low post play on the Missouri Tiger players and score. And what they've done today, they've worked the ball, worked the ball, and all of a sudden, Pollard or Ostertag slips in in the low post. They make an easy play. Look at look at the KU defense. And John, as an offensive player, you want to score. Does this defense get to you mentally after a while? You have to work so hard for everything you get. Well, the one thing it shouldn't. When they have three players chasing the ball half court, the open area is a basket. It allows you easier shots if you're patient enough to find the open man. Got Vaughn going for the steal, got tangled up, and it's going to be Iowa State basketball. Kimbrough and Vaughn were tangled up with their feet at midcourt. They both hit the deck. Roy Williams out of the Dean Smith School. When they jump you at half court, someone is open. You just have to make them court. Lauren Meyer got a step there, and Iowa State got a little lucky there. 5.53 left in our first half. Iowa State by two, and the crowd in Hilton really into this ball game, and well, they should be. Jared has three. He got the roll. Has, has eight points. LaFrance and Ostertag have not scored for Kansas. Pearson has six, Hass has eight, Vaughn has nine. For Iowa State, Mika Leak six, Holberg has ten. 
B.J. Williams just took the basketball from Mikulik. Mikulik not paying attention. Pass. Rebound. Derrick Hayes for Iowa State. They give it to Jason Kimbrough. One thing Tim Floyd said yesterday, he said, Kansas does not beat themselves. They don't make a lot of mistakes. And defensively, they come up with a couple steals, and that ignites Kansas a little bit. Iowa State has to protect the basketball. Mikali, spin move in the circle, and an off-balance shot won't fall. Jared Hess with a rebound for Kansas. The Jayhawks up one with the basketball. A great look and a great catch and a bucket for Scott Pollard. Jared Hass handling the basketball on the wing, picks it up and fires one inside. Great pass and also a great catch. Pass from the score. Pollard just put the man on his hip and then spun inside and did make a tough catch. KU on a 5-0 run. The Jayhawks lead by three. Like Iowa State may have flattened out a little bit. Well, and the one thing Tim Floyd has said when they get in this position, he wants to pull the ball out just a little bit and open it up sometimes for Lone Mark. Look at Kimbrough, and he got the roll. Jason Kimbrough has five. Kansas won and look at Haas go to the bucket. He's fouled by Mika Lake as he got it there, but I'll tell you what, he is fearless when it comes to doing that. Well, the transition basketball has favored Kansas all afternoon. When the score goes in, it's one quick pass to Vaughn and up the basketball court. Vaughn has great vision. Haas beat everybody down the floor. The only thing left to do is foul him. He takes it hard to the hole. Now they called, that, called a foul on Hayes, not on Mika Lake. It looked like Mika Lake was up and got him. They called it on Derrick Hayes. That's his first. Hess had a dunk at Missouri the other night, and I thought showed us just about how fearless he is. He took that thing in traffic and slammed it home. Hess, the sophomore from South Lake Tahoe, California. He's really added a punch to this Kansas ball club with Steve Woodbury graduating. They needed someone to supply the outside power. They got a lot more when they got this kid. Not only can he shoot it, he can do everything else. Sophomore transfer from Calvary played with Jason Kidd in the backcourt. And John, in all honesty, he may be a little bit better than KU even hoped he would be when they when they got him. I think so. When you watch him play, he does a lot of things, and he has two more years after this year to do it in. So outstanding, and he compliments Jock Vaughn very well. KU on a 7-2 run. The Jayhawks have had great success with transfers. Here's a 1-3-1 half-court trap. And look how big Ostertag and the uh, friends are across the front line inside. Ostertag up at the top of the circle. They look down in there. Meyer standing in one corner. Pearson in the other. Now cross-court pass, and Meyer's going to try it. <laughs> Ostertag almost got to it. And terrific ball movement. Finally, they were trying to get it set, trying to get it set. Finally, they got the ball movement. No dribbles, made the easy shot. Oster tag made a run at Lauren Meyer, but Meyer got his eight point down. CB McGrath, LaFrance. Oh. Oster tag, no. Greg Gurley in heavy traffic. Knocked down to take the ball away from him. Hoiberg for the Cyclones. And a chance to take the lead. Good. That's a three. Hoiberg with a trade. He has 13. Look at Tim Floyd behind. He's, I think he's going to steal the basketball pretty soon. <laughs> Sliding his feet okay. Doing a good job, basically, down the line. Listen to the crowd of names. Billy Thomas. Oster tag. Can't control it, and he's going to be called for the foul. His second. Listen to the crowd in Hilton. If you live in Ames, where would you rather be right now? <laughs> well, the nice thing about it, they call it the Hilton Magic. And we were talking to Tim Floyd about it yesterday. He said, I hope you guys are right. A fourth shot, not a good shot. Good block out that time by Lauren Meyer. Ostertag went over the back. Lauren Meyer converts these. He keeps the crowd right into this game. And you know what, John? You see this, and you really have to admire Roy Williams and his team. They have great poise. They face the situation so many times. And remember the young kids. They just keep their poise and keep playing. Talking to Matt Doherty, assistant coach for Roy Williams today, he said, you know, we played so well, we, we hope our young kids aren't overconfident. He knows how tough it is coming to here. Some of the young players haven't had to play as much. Biggest lead of the day for Iowa State at four points. KU is led by eight. We have a 39-35 lead for the Cyclones here. Now 
the crowd at Hilton is really into it. You're on the Kansas team playing on the road. How do you feel about crowds like this? Well, offensively, what you want to do is get a good look, good handle of the basketball. That's not a bad shot for Gurley because he normally makes that one. But you get back the offensive end. Handle the basketball, keep moving, keep moving until you find an easy one. And Kansas, when they handle the ball, can break down Iowa State's defense. It takes some time, but if they keep doing it, if they take the first shot and miss and the rebound comes down Iowa State, they continue the momentum. It's not so much that a crowd like this will intimidate the opponent. They lift the home team so much, don't they? And that's been the story of Iowa State in the past under Johnny Orr's ball club. They were always terrific at home, didn't play so well on the road, and you could never figure out that their players elevated their ball games and they played here in Hilton. David Hickman came in the game to hold the fort, and he held a Kansas player instead, got a personal foul. His first. Hickman just off the bench for the Cyclones. That's Jacques Vaughn, J.C. Holloway defending him. LaFrance had an ocean. Now he's going to try it. He stepped inside the three-point line, took the two. I don't think it was going to count. There was a foul called down away from the ball. That foul was on Hickman again. He just came off the bench, and David Hickman has committed two quick fouls. As LaFrance was getting ready to shoot, they fouled Ostertag. Well, and one thing, Tim Floyd mentioned this. What they like to do sometimes is they'll foul the worst free throw shooter once they get to seven, six and 17 foul, just to see if Ostertag, who has not shot free throws well, if he, if he misses the first one, it's a wasted possession for Kansas. Tim Floyd's been known to do it. He talked about it yesterday. They may try it. They've tried it right away. 44% free throw shooter. LaFrance, who hasn't scored yet today in his return to his home state of Iowa, was hesitant about shooting the ball, and before he could get it up, Hickman had fouled Ostertag, and Ostertag sticks the first free throw, so he answered that okay. He answered it. If he makes this one, don't look for Tim Floyd's ball club to do it again. Against Iowa State last year with Lauren Meyer out of the lineup, Ostertag made 13 out of 18 shots. It's been a little tougher day for him today, but he steps up and hits two free throws, so there goes that strategy out the window. And here's back, 1-3-1 one, one, half-court trap. If the ball can get to the middle and then enter it on the outside, you'll see shots will be open down in the corners where Lauren Meyer hit one the first time against his defense. They have Hass at the baseline. There are three big people across the free throw line and extended, and Vaughn out front. Earl Beecham lets one fly. And the rebound to Kansas. Sean Pearson had it down in there. And Harold Beecham, no, it's Lauren Meyer. Uh-oh. And that's his second foul, and both fouls have not been very efficient and very smart. That time reaching around, frustrated. He had an opportunity to get the rebound, didn't quite get there. What do you do now? 2-10 left in the half. Two-point ball game. You're up by two. And I think the answer's coming. They're going to take him out of the ball game. I would say you protect him two fouls, let him have a rest. Yeah, what well, Tim Floyd has to be thinking, boy, he could have been sitting here. He could have been here with no fouls right now. He's made two bad fouls. James Hamilton will replace him as Meyer sits down with 2.10 left in the first half. He's brought up two in the free throw now. You know, it's unusual about that Pearson, who is an outstanding shooter when he gets on roll, only shoots 56% from the free throw line. You are a great free throw shooter. Do you have any explanation for what's going on? I, I think it's practice habits. I think it's concentration. Once you told the line, your mind should be totally focused. You were up in the 80s, right? Yeah, sometimes. Right now. However, got the shot up and was fouled. Well, it looks like Fred has added a little bit of the dribble to his game. A lot of times he's just a shooter that comes off picks, likes to get set and shoot it so far. We've already seen him put the ball on the floor, get it to the pain area and draw contact. Second foul, Scott Potter. Both teams have committed eight. Fred Hoiberg, two for two at the line. Now has 14 points. That's a sound you love to hear as a shooter, isn't it? Well, if you'd like to see a good free throw shooter, just watch Freddie. Kid toes the line, concentration is good. Everything's just been automatic for him. Repetition, practice, concentration is enough. And confidence, kind of like a putt, isn't it? You have to think you're going to make it. You have to know you're going to make it. Yeah. There it has. Sean Pearson loose at the line and stuck the shot. Sean Pearson with his eighth point of the ball game. Beecham got caught on a little pick. Kansas doing a nice job setting bodies. Pearson frees himself up. We have a minute and a half left and a half. Iowa State going to spread it out a little bit. It's interesting. Pearl Beecham against Pearson, and he couldn't get the penetration, and now we have a whistle and a double dribble. Kansas forced the turnover. Well, I'm not sure 
Robert Beecham's the guy you want in the middle hand the basketball. You know, you have Hoiberg, you have J.C. Holloway. I think those are the two guys. Tim Floyd wanted to spread the ball, the floor out, and let him handle, but Beecham got stuck. Tim Floyd not agreeing with the call. He is a young coach with a lot of poise and a young coach with a lot of experience. Here it is. Pearson gets away with the push. Uh, Tim Floyd might have had a little argument there. <laughs> he started to make the move and then didn't, and now a pick set down low by Jared Hess. And, that, and this is called frustration. You make the turnover on one end, and on the other end, you get tired of getting picked all the time. Beecham says, enough of this. And that's a foul. But that's a frustration. You make a mistake on one end and really a mistake on the other end. You put a good free throw shooter on the line. Jared Hass up there. 69% shooter. He has 10 points in this contest. Well, a simple thing. Iowa State was up 39-35. And really just free throws has come back. Has brought the Kansas all the way back. Now only down one. Hass setting that pick. Happened to him before. He is a rugged physical player down in there. And like I said, you're a defensive player. You get tired of people hitting you. You try to hit somebody after a while. And you never know, Hass may not set a solid pick again because Beecham got him pretty good. A minute to go in a half. Iowa State with the ball one. Pretty big possession for him. Last minute. Pretty important if they can keep this thing in good shape at halftime, then they have to feel pretty good about themselves. Be nice to get momentum with your side. Over with a long miss. Here comes Jack Pond. Watch him push it. Oh, what a move. Wouldn't go. Pollard with a tip try that wouldn't go. Boy, did Vaughn get it there? You know, there are times no matter if you make or miss, what it does is it drew all the Iowa State people. He made his decision up. He got the ball out at about three-quarters court. You could see him in half court. He just turned it on. Good spin move. Watch all the Cyclone jerseys go after. They got the ball, and that leaves Pollard right there for the tip in. And Mika Lee trying to get over his back commits his first foul. Scott Pollard. You know, you can't make up for size or speed in this game. Seven points, Scott Pollard, a sophomore from San Diego. Torrey Pines High School. That's a golf course you'd like to play. <laughs> it's amazing you can play basketball out there. <laughs> Isn't it though? You ever played Torrey Pines? I haven't. Interesting play. The gliders flying off the cliffs. I right? played it on a computer game. Right? I guess that doesn't count. Well, they have the last possession. Although there's a difference of about eight seconds. On the shot clock. We'll see how they handle it. Well, has almost intercepted. Good save by Hoiberg. He really protected the ball. Roy Williams wants to get Greg Willie in the game for the last shot if possible. Beecham. Mika Link has the rebound. Up he goes. And it <laughs> Plenty of time for Kansas now to get the last second shot. 16 seconds. They're going to run the clock down and just go for one and take it into halftime. And now the crowd is in this ball game. Eight seconds left in the half. Takes the shot. It's a deuce if it goes. It doesn't. And there's the end of the half. It's a good half. And Iowa State will take a two-point lead to the locker room against number three ranked Kansas on the Cyclones home court. Good half, John. Outstanding half. Good ball game. Iowa State did the things they needed to do. Lord Meyer got a little bit of rest. They kept the lead, and they're pretty confident. Doug looks a little more relaxed than he would if he were sitting down on the bench right now. It's a little easier when you move a few rows back. Yeah, what an outstanding coach he had ball clubs. When you came to Hilton to play Johnny Horsey, it was quite a chore to, to stay in the ball game, let alone beat him. You know, John, look at this ball game and talk about the lack of turnovers. Both these teams, good defensive ball clubs. Both of them have limited the opposition to under 40% shooting for the year. The offenses have really stood up in the face of that defense on both sides. The score is a score that's headed for the high 80s. The shooting percentages are up solidly in the 40s on both ball clubs. You start looking at two of these, the two ball clubs, and one of the reasons you're under that percentage most of your games in December, you don't play quite the caliber as these two are today. So Kansas, first possession, second half, down two. It's a 
lob toward Ostertag. Meyer knocks it away. And nice help by Meyer and Mikalik. Both inside Ostertag and friends are going to set picks, try to free each other up. See if Kansas tries to get it inside just a little bit more. Try to go at Meyer? Yeah, I would think so. He's got two fouls. That's a big key for Iowa State to keep him in the ball game. Jared Hass down in there setting picks against everybody. The fronts didn't score in the first half, and that one wouldn't fall for him. Pearson now off the fingertips of a Kansas player out of bounds by Iowa State. They went to the friends in a hurry. Maybe a little confidence boost in there? I think so. And, that, you know, he doesn't really play like he's frustrated or anything. He just hasn't had that many looks at the basket. So I think Roy Williams said, let's get him a couple, see if he can open some things up. Now, Ray for the friends in the first half. Roy didn't shoot the ball. Except Roy had one shot. And four rebounds. Now Meyer backing Ostertag in, and there's nowhere to go with it. <laughs> Ostertag threw up a blanket. Holloway against Vaughn. Off balance shot won't fall. Tip try Meyer no. Legally touched out of bounds. You know the nice play about Hollywood that time, he threw it off the glass. At least he got it up there because Meyer had a chance to get Ostertag to try to block. As you see, Iowa State, the three main guys are going to score on the other end. They spread it around a little bit. Pearson over Hoiberg, and he got the roll. Oh boy, that's a nice curl by Pearson. He comes off the pick, and instead of allowing his defensive man to get in there, he curls around, catches the ball, gets a one bounce, and he's easy shot. We're tied at 43. Fourth tie today. Pearson has 10. Mikali moving shot. That's, that's routine for Mikali. Not many 6'11 guys can shoot the running one-handed. <laughs> Oh, what a pass from John Vaughn down inside to Pearson. One thing Hoiberg is doing is really face guarding Pearson. He's not seeing where the basketball is. So he cut back door. Jock Vaughn put it right on the money. Fifth tie of the day. We are at 45 all. Nico Leak with a leaner. Rebound, Ray LaFrance. His fifth. Vaughn used Meyer for the screen that time. Well, one thing, one thing Vaughn does. As he's coming down, he looks, he uses different players. Backdoor, Hoiberg does not see the basketball. Pearson, they will backdoor the heck out of him, Roy Williams' system. Last time down, Vaughn, what he does is run interference off his players. He uses big guys as they're running to zigzag back and forth. Holloway couldn't find him, then finally bumped him for the foul. Second foul, J.C. Holloway, and now Hass from the corner for three. Oster tag, kick it back out. Bomb, Billy Thomas, there's a shooter you talked about earlier, and he couldn't quite get the roll that time. Iowa State has it. Still a nice shot. Still a nice looking shot, get the young kid on the roll. Meyer, after Ostertag, and Ostertag made him shoot it off balance. Well, Lauren Meyer worried too much about the contact. He had an easy layup, and he worried too much about drawing the contact. What a shot, Bob. Eighth lead change of the day. Kansas up two. Jacques Vaughn has 11. Count the bucket. Let's go now to Al Wallace in Studio 66 for an update. Third foul on, Leif, on Rafe LaFrance. Julius Mikali. Julius has a dozen points. Good throw wouldn't drop. He got the bucket. That wasn't a real positive move to the basket that he made, but he got it down. And LaFrance now has three fouls. Billy Thomas, the freshman. Holloway on bottom. Thomas. Over. To get the rebound. Thomas right now can't quite find it. They're setting good picks and freeing him up. Earl Meacham. Holloway. The French has three and Mikalik's going to go at him. Now he's in trouble. Hoiberg bails him out. Little Lauren Meyer. That one wouldn't fall. Mikalik's got it back. Where's he going to go? Right at Howard and he got fouled. This might be the most aggressive I've seen the Iowa State ball club go after the offensive board. Mikalik and Meyer keeping it active, going at it, attacking the glass. This time Hoiberg, good help by Pollard that time defensively. Watch Lauren Meyer. He keeps it up. 
One time, LaFrance tries to tap it away. Watch how aggressive Meek becomes. Got away with a little hook, draws a contact. LaFrance is out, Billy Thomas is out. That's three on Pollard, LaFrance has three. D.J. Williams is back in for Kansas. Now Mikulik, an 83% free throw shooter, is 0 for 3 at the line today. Has a dozen points. <laughs> Iowa State by a point. 16.30 left in the game. Jock Vaughn. Holberg with the rebound. Nice defensive stop. Awful quick shot by Pearson, but he had a good look at it. We've had nine lean changes and five ties in this game. Mikulik going right at Pollard and couldn't knock it down. And here comes Vaughn. The Jayhawks out. Vaughn is fouled. Well, he's intelligent. Well, Vaughn got Fred off his feet. On the other end, Hoiberg makes a terrific pass. Mikulik doesn't finish the play. Now Vaughn goes. Little head and shoulders. Hoiberg goes up. Vaughn draws a contact and he'll go to line shooting two. Second foul on Fred Hoiberg. Fred wanted offensive foul. It's an interesting call, actually. Sometimes when a player jumps straight up, some coaches and players think that should not be a foul. They thought Vaughn created the contact. Vaughn has 11 points. He had five assists in the first half. He's played good defense. He's a 3.8 student. He writes poetry. What else? <laughs> he does it all. Strong with both of them, and Pearson got the long rebound. And that's a big rebound. Look at Pollard trying to post Meyer down inside, and Mika Luke's over there helping. Basically a box and one. They're going to guard Hass, as you can see. Beecham chasing Hass, and that's almost a triangle and two. Pearson tried to drop it to Pollard. It's knocked out to Kansas, so their tenth point has gone to the gimmick defense. It is 48-47 Iowa State here. Generally, you're involved in these games as a player or as a coach. They're a lot easier on you probably than they are on fans, aren't they? Much harder to watch these games than to play. You enjoy the up and down. You can get away with it. You run hard, the nerves kind of leave you. Jayhawks down one. Pollard with a miss. Look at the battle for the rebound, and the foul is going to go against Kansas. Sean Pearson with his first foul. Out of timeouts, Roy Williams likes to get either a good jump shot for Haas or something inside. That time they had Pollard down on the block, a little right hook. He just missed it. Nice offensive play, nice set, just missed the shot. Both clubs struggling this half. Iowa State 25%, KU only 30%. Meek League has all five points so far for the Cyclone. Look at the pressure way out on the floor. Beecham threw it away. Picked up by Kansas. B.J. Williams gets it to John Vaughn, which all things considered is a great idea. <laughs> John Vaughn runs his offense. Look at that. Oh, Scott Pollard got the dish from John Vaughn. Solid picks, lack of communication on the defensive end. Nine points spotter to Kansas back up by one. 14-52 left in the game. Holberg. That's the try. Mikuli, way deep, couldn't get it, and it's Kansas ball. Pass to Vaughn. Here they come on the break. Did he oh, get it there? <laughs> oh. You find number 11 if you're in a blue uniform. 14 for Sean Pearson and another assist for Jacques Vaughn. And last time down, Vaughn helped out Hass. Hass was beat a little bit by Hoiberg as he pulled up. Jacques Vaughn stepped in Hoiberg's line, missed the shot. Tyler, your point card to get it there that quickly and then make an intelligent decision. Got a nice little package. Well, what it does, it puts a lot of pressure on the defensive end of running back and then picking the ball up. 
Lauren Meyer was working hard down inside and drew the foul. It's on Jock Vaughn, his sir. The more pressure you can put on a defensive ball club initially, the more they have to run back. Now you can either take it if you have it or back it out, but you're always on top of them, and that's what Jock Vaughn does. And he kind of balances it. There'll be three or four minutes where he attacks, and then there are a couple minutes where he just sits back and waits. He does a nice job of mixing it up for his offensive ball club. Derrick Hayes in for Iowa State now. LaFrance back in for Kansas. Meyer, Mikalik, Hoiberg, Holloway, and Meyer for Iowa State. Billy Thomas, Jared Haas, LaFrance, Ostertag, and Vaughn for Kansas. Where are the Jayhawks in here? Hoiberg, air ball to three. He's not shooting at Will this half. Well, and you watch Vaughn. Vaughn gets to play center field. Holloway's not looking to shoot it. Holloway's going to have to step up to the 12-foot mark and at least take it. They have to honor him or else it's a five, or four on five game. Kansas up three with the basketball. Oh, the ball is right behind J.C. Holloway and he couldn't see it and Hoiberg comes out of there in front. You know one thing? I would say does a lot of face start and you don't see the basketball. That time Holloway didn't see it. We saw the back door against Hoiberg one time. You have to know where the ball is at all times. I could be dead wrong. I got a feeling Rafe LaFrance is about to do something for Kansas. He had a very quiet day. There's Meyer going after Ostertag and missing. Ostertag is making a huge, huge difference in the middle for Kansas. To win big ball games, you need to finish those easy baskets. Now here's a case where Ostertag's box score won't look like that much when this game is over, but it won't reflect on what he's done as presence is in. Well, his presence all year has been terrific. He just seems much more aggressive on the defensive end than a year ago. Now, Billy Thomas with a miss. Meyer to Holloway with a Cyclones push it. Mika Lake to the middle. All the way back outside. Does Meyer want to go after Oster tag this time? Nope. Mika Lake spotted up outside. The ball crawled over the rim. Kansas basketball. Iowa State looks a little flat right now. Maybe they look a little weary. I don't know if that's it or not, but they're missing. Lauren Meyer looks a little tired. His hands on his hips. He's battling big players all day. That time he elected not to take the shot, and he passed it out. Meek League looked like he was on target. Two of 13 Iowa State is the second half. Getting some good looks. Now, Hoiberg coming out of the game for the first time today. They're going to give him a little breather. Oster tag. We're talking about the effect he has on the ball game. His box score is never going to reflect the way he's made his presence felt on defense over today, changing so many shots down inside. Gurley. Somewhat of a box and one defense again. Iowa State's going to try to box it up inside and watch beats him will guard Pearson, the shooter. Now Gurley fires and gets it. A three from the top of the circle. Greg Gurley's first points of the ball game. That could be big. That puts Kansas up by a half dozen. Tim Floyd gave some names out this morning on guys when they come in the game. Don't allow them to just stand and shoot. And Gurley was one of those names. Good standing shooter. Seven zero run for Kansas here. Derek Hayes went inside. Ostertag changed the shot again. Might have had a hand on that one. Gurley. Going to pull it back out. KU is playing well right now. Well, you have Gurley and Pearson. Both guys can shoot. And Jock Vaughn. Nice pass. Gurley to Ostertag in the miss. And LaFrance trying to save the rebound. Out of bounds to Kansas. With 11.27 left in the game. 454 48 Kansas. doggedly turning this game in their favor. They were down two at halftime. They have just been keeping the pressure on Iowa State throughout the second half. The Cyclones looking a little weary, having trouble shooting the ball. Kansas lead is just six. Certainly still a very close ball game, and Iowa State's going to have to get it going. Well, they need to step up. They're getting good looks at the basket. Now you just have to knock some in. They haven't had a field goal in six minutes, Iowa State. They have not scored in over five minutes. The last points came from the free throw line. And now a foul on Kansas and one that Roy Williams probably not going to be real fun. That's 
Jock Vaughn's third foul. That time coming out of the timeout, Vaughn picked up Hoiberg. Gurley picked up Holloway. Roy Williams had said Vaughn will kind of switch off and on to different players. They don't want to wear him out. Right now, he'll pick up Derek Hayes. Team foul, second half, five on Kansas, two Iowa State, and a deflection on the inbounds pass, and Kansas comes out of there with a basketball. And Gurley is out, and Jared Haas back in for the University of Kansas. Here you see what's happened in the second half. Look at the field goal percentage has fallen off for Iowa State into that Kansas pressure. Kansas down a bit, too, but Iowa State, oh, they lost their legs. They look a little tired, and they're missing some point-blind shots. And there is the first bucket of the day for Rafe LaFrench, the freshman from Lamona, Iowa. LaFrench getting his first points of the day in his first game back in his home state. Biggest lead of the day, equal by Kansas now. They are up eight at one point in the first half. You get the feeling Iowa State better do something pretty soon. Kansas looks like they're not going to let up. He has scored all the Iowa State points in the second half. With his seventh second half point, his 15th of the game. Last time down the floor, Iowa State fronted LaFrance. Oh. Oh, Mikulik, oh, oh, oh. he got away with the court. Oh, Mikulik touched it when he maybe shouldn't have, but they're going to keep it alive. It didn't go out of bounds, and Hoiberg gets away. Nice decision by Jock Vaughn with three fouls not to pick up his fourth. Mikulik on the one end got away with the push, then made a terrific play to save it. Nice decision by Vaughn. He did not need his fourth personal smart enough to get out of the way. Four-point lead, Kansas and McCrown and Hilton back in the ballgame now. They haven't had much to cheer about in the second half. They do now. The crowd yelling defense. Pearson. Kleber spares the rebound. And a foul against Kansas. And not the shot Roy Williams was looking for. They're running their offense. They need more movement when they're successful. One bounce, good defense. He jumps up. Really not the shot. Not enough movement. They were standing around. Pearson tried to take it himself. When he missed the shot, then he makes a silly foul. Iowa State, the crowd is now into it again, Fred. And that seems to pick up this ball club. Let's see if they can get a hoop. Third foul on Sean Pearson. He's the fourth Jayhawk to back up his third foul. They could be in some foul trouble. We have 9.30 to play. Mika Lake. Almost got happy feet over there in traffic. <laughs> Bails it out, gives it to J.C. Holloway. Oh, boy. Hoiberg just hit the deck as Pollard back into him. That's four on Scott Pollard. Pollard draws his fourth foul with 9-17 left in the game. The Jayhawks may be headed for foul trouble. They have three players with three, and now Pollard has four. Here comes Greg Ostertag. Here goes Scott Pollard. Puts down with 9-17 to play. And a big difference in team foul. Seven now for Kansas. Only two for Iowa State. Hoiberg gets to go to the line. Nice job by Hoiberg setting the pick. When you get tired defensively, sometimes you don't look where you're going, and that time they just ran right over Fred. 18 points for Fred Hoiberg. Foul trouble appeared on the horizon with about nine and a half minutes left in this game for Kansas. They were leading by six. So let's kind of track it from here on out and see if the foul trouble does cost them. They have a lot of boys. I'm sure they know how to play with problems like that. Hoiberg has 20. Now the Cyclones have scored six straight. Kansas lead is down to two. Jared Hatch. Heavy pressure from Hayes. LaFrance. Well, I tell you what, the freshman may be coming alive. I said a minute ago, you have the feeling he's going to do something soon, and now here he is with his first two buckets of the ball game. He has talent, doesn't he? Well, he does. It looks like a mismatch, and Hamilton's on him inside. Now KU going to a little 2-3 zone, give him a little rest. Hoiberg, three. You better find your shooter if you're going to zone it up. Hoiberg suddenly has come to life in the second half. He has 22. The Jayhawks by one with 8.38 to play. Good look inside to LaFrance, and he's fouled. Hey, well, all of a sudden, Ray LaFrance has come to life. He wants it, doesn't he? Well, and I think Jock Vaughn and, and the rest of his teammates recognize a mismatch. Hamilton's just not quite big enough at 6'7 inside to guard him. And as they try to get position, last time around in front of him, he tries to get around. Again, too late. Nice pass right on the money from half. Would have been an easy basket, but they tackled his ankle right there. 9-2 Cyclone run, broken only by the Ray LaFrance basket. Kansas lead is down to one. Now we have the whistle inside. And Oster Tag and Meyer exchanging words. Nothing's going to happen. The officials are all over it. A nice job by the officials. Yes, it is. Both players are getting lectured about settling down. Great for the freshman going to the 
sitting here saying, hey, don't do that. Well, these two Warriors, they've been battling all day, pushing, shoving. That's always bound to happen. It's just really competition. The foul was on Lauren Meyer, and that's his third. It comes with 8.30 30 left in the game. Could change the complexion of it. Boy, look at the pushing down inside as Hass hits the deck. I like that call. Hamilton again. He, once he hit the pick, almost like I don't want the effort of fighting around the pick, I'll just go through it. That's not a good foul. Second foul on James Hamilton, fifth on Iowa State. KU has seven, seven here in the second half. Pass from the deep corner. And Ostertag had it stripped out of there by J.C. Holloway. And here come the Cyclones. They've got Hayes on the wing, and Holloway is going to give it to Meyer. Back to Hoiberg. I think they got Pearson for his fourth. Fred Hoiberg doing a nice job. He has hit his outside jump shot, so now he's using the ball fake and taking it to the glass. This time, Holloway pushes the ball. Lauren Meyer has an open one, but he doesn't even look to the hoop. They get it to the shooter. Ball fake, nice one. Hand check, easy foul. When you can shoot jump shots and you make them, you can be so effective with the ball fake. Now both Pearson and Pollard have four fouls for Kansas. Oster Tag has two, so he can still be aggressive inside. Hoiberg, seven for seven at the line, 23 points today. We're tied. We're on time. Hoiberg puts the sidelines up by a point with 8.15 to play. Listen to the crowd in here. Kansas needs a good look. Ostertag and Meyer were battling down inside, and that is going to be the fourth foul on Lauren Meyer. And that's a tough call. I tell you what, that is a tough call. Both guys just fighting for position. As they come in the upper part of the screen, Meyer is just really fighting around. I, I don't, you know, there's contact, but that is not a big deal to those guys. That is a tough foul, and that hurts Iowa State. Boy, that's one that is tough. And that is the fourth on Lauren Meyer. He got two fouls in 26 seconds and went from two fouls in good shape to four fouls in bad shape. 804 left in this one. Iowa State leading 59-58. The Cyclones have taken this time out. The first call by either team today. something special. That time, a little back pick for the friends. The lob didn't quite get the handle on it. He was there. The ball was there. Didn't quite get the handle, but he kept following it up. He'll go to the free throw line. That foul was Julius Mikalik's second. Lauren Meyer is on the bench with four fouls. 7.56 to play. Two of those fouls in 26 seconds. He went from two to four in a hurry. Well, if you think about it, three of the fouls, and maybe all four of them, almost silly fouls and, and non-eventful fouls. Away from the basketball, away from the whole game. Rafe LaFrance now has five points. His first game back in his home state of Iowa. He's from Monona, Iowa, about 150 miles from here. 6'11 first. Ostertag slapped it out, tried to keep it alive. Holloway saves it for the Cyclones. Lobbed to Hayes, wouldn't go. to try no. And Kansas basketball. Stolen away. Trying to get it inside the front. And taken out of there by Iowa State. James Hamilton got it. Here are the Cyclones tied with 7.33 to play. Nice Hamilton on one end. He almost gets a tip in. He's all the way back, makes a steal. Big, big possession for Iowa State. Kansas. Now they're going to almost kind of box in one. They're going to guard Hoiberg with Gurley, and they're just going to kind of box inside. Hayes, Holloway, 10 seconds on the clock. Holloway in the lane, outside. Mikalik, five on the clock. Holloway's going to have to take a shot in traffic, and Ostertag knocks it back at him, and it's going to be shot clock running out. Back to Kansas it comes. Good defense for the Jayhawks. Good defensive stop. Gurley did not allow Hoiberg to see it. The rest of them just boxed up. Put a lot of pressure. Iowa State did not look at the hoop until it was too late. 
Ostertag, fourth block. He was just sitting back in there waiting on Holloway that time. Coming to my parlor. High to 59. Seventeen on the shot clock. Pass. Ostertag. We're going to leave Ostertag alone out there. He just finds Vaughn and gives it back to him. Eight on the shot clock. We'll see if Vaughn can break Holloway down. We got great help from Hamilton. Iowa State takes it back on the block from Hamilton. Good defense both sides, I think. Both sides. Nice defensive play. Horber's got one. Three. Nope. Long with the rebound. Here come the Jayhawks. We're still tied at 59. And Hamilton got a hand on it. It's off Vaughn's knee out of bounds by Iowa State. You have to like the intensity of James Hamilton. He made the steal one time. That time the hustle back. The hand, the little flick, it went off Vaughn's leg. 6-10 left to play. A 59-59 tie. You would think now that the advantage would swing to a home team, a senior-dominated team, but this young Kansas club has so much poise. And it hurts without Meyer being in the ball game. There's also tag changing way for a shot. Now a whistle blowing. That'll be called a jump ball. And the possession arrow. Belongs to Iowa State. There's one interesting thing when you play against a great shot blocker. Watch what happens. And it was earlier, if Meyer was in, you could throw it off the board and go get it. See, Ostertag has allowed the lane to be open. Hamilton just, well, they call it jump ball there. Almost looked like he got hit in the head. If you just throw it up in the air off the board, I think there's freedom to get it because Ostertag has vacated the area. Hoiberg saves what could have turned into a bad pass. Nika League to the circle, floating jumper off the rim and rebounded big by Jared Hass for Kansas. We're still tied at 59. 540 to play. Good ball game. Outstanding game. Both teams playing well. The scoring has really slowed down since halftime. It was 43-41. Iowa State at halftime. There's a lot goes for Tag, and not much they can do about that. His six point. And what a tough pass, tough angle. Credit Jared Hass all the way from the top. Not much room to throw it between the hand and the backboard, but he put it right on the money. Now we have a 20-second timeout called by Iowa State. The second timeout that has been called by Tim Floyd. Let's take a look now at our Pizza Hut delivery of the game. And a game just a few moments ago here in Hilton Coliseum. The angle is not very easy, but Ostertag seals off Mikulik. Fine puts a hand up to pass right on the money. The only person can catch it is Big O, and Big O knows what to do right down there with it. Pizza Hut deliver the game brought to you by Pizza Hut. You love the stuff we're made of. 5.15 to play. Kansas by two. Lauren Meyer has checked back in the ball game. Fred Hoiberg will handle the inbounds pass. Lauren Meyer set down with 8.04 left in the game. He's back in at 5.15. Iowa State's missed their last five field goal attempts. They're now five of 22 in the second half, 23%. There you see the foul trouble, both clubs. Mikuli, flat-footed shot, won't fall, and nothing but blue jerseys under the basket. Taken down by B.J. Williams for Kansas, the youngster from Wichita. Kansas went back to the box and won out of the timeout, and the result was good. Vaughn against Gary Cage. Williams had his own rebound at the baseline, and he's fouled. Eric Hayes and Warren Meyer were there, and Hayes fouled him. His second. B.J. Williams, the young man who has springs in his legs, just goes up to the ball, hit a big shot at the Missouri ball game. Missouri had narrowed it to five points. He scored on the block that time. He missed, but quickly went after the basketball. He has a 32-inch vertical jump. He's a sophomore out of South High School in Wichita. A school has turned out some players in the past. Now Hull beats him in. There he pays out. Tim Floyd's exchanging some offense for some defense. Well, and here's one that's going to be interesting. Roy Williams are playing low box and one in Garden Hoiberg, but you better cover Beecham. They may switch defenses and go back to man. Pearl Beecham can knock in threes. Last year, I remember doing the Oklahoma State game, he was 7 for 9 from three-point land, had 25 points. B.J. Williams, third point of the day, and now Kansas by three. A little bit of daylight for the Jayhawks here. Well, if they win this ball game, Kansas, that is, they will have won at Missouri and at Iowa State to start the conference season. And this would be the fourth year in a row that they've won their first two conference their, their first two conference games on the road. 
D.J. Williams, apparently there's something in his eye. Well, now they need to find Beecham. He's the guy that could shoot it. They're going to get out on him defensively. All the way. Hoiberg gets a pick from Warren Meyer. Can't shake loose. Beecham able to save it. Box and one. You have Beecham and Meeklik, the guys who will be able to get open. Ten on the shot clock, and the ball deflected down in there. We're going to have to shoot it. J.C. Holloway gives it up. Nice from the arc. Shot no good. Rebound. Lauren Meyer brings it down, and a whistle blowing. And a foul on Jared Hass on his side, and that will be the first on Jared Hass. 407 left in this game. Let's go back to Al Wallace in Studio 66. Bit of an eye opener there, John. Well, you have to love college basketball. That's the time of year everything happens. No surprises. Lauren Meyer scoreless in the second half. Couldn't get the free throw to drop. Kansas with a four point lead in the ball. Four minutes to play. Advantage right now, Fred, is Kansas because of Jock Bond. He can keep the ball in his hands, run the plays, run the sets they need offensively to get good shots. Earl Beecham. Call for the foul. Second time he's knocked somebody down. They're going to set a pick. Gurley, they're going to try to fear that pass. Look at Gurley headhunting right there. Might have gotten away with a block. Beecham tried to run him over. What Kansas will do when they set a particular play, they will headhunt and try to find the right man to pick. They do a nice job of freeing up bodies. That time, Hass is going to come over for the shot. Gurley gets the foul. He'll go to the line for two. 15 out of 16 at the free throw line this year is Greg Gurley. And you can see why when you see him shoot the basketball. Very confident. Senior from Leewood, Kansas, out of Shawnee Nation South High School. Kansas by five now. 348 to play. Timeout here, 348 left in this game. Kansas has the lead back to six. Six-point lead here with 3.48 to play in Ames. Next week, it's another Big A doubleheader. It all starts at 12.30 with Al Wallace in Studio 66, followed by Iowa State and Kansas State. Then it's Game 2 with Kansas at Colorado. Iowa State needs a, Iowa State needs a basket here. The box and one has worked effectively for Kansas. They're focusing on Hoiberg trying to challenge all other shots. Mika Lake couldn't get it. Rebound great Curly. Here come the Jayhawks leading by six. Cyclones 20% the second half, and that really tells the story. Well, you really have to admire this Kansas ball club, John. A young ball club playing on the road. A great chance now to win at the two tough places they'll have to play on the road in all likelihood all year. Missouri and here. They've won at Missouri. Pass. That one wouldn't fall. Iowa State still has a shot. Lauren Meyer pulled the rebound down. Gurley was holding point for and Greg Gurley claiming innocence good for his first foul and a tough call for Gurley all he's trying to do is face guard Hoiberg wherever he goes Fred's having a hard time freeing him up Meekly tried to set the pick looked like Gurley was around it Fred Hoiberg's a senior he kind of locked arms with Gurley and threw him up in the air and referee gave him the call but that's what you want to do if you're Iowa State stop the clock get to the free throw line make some free throws B.J. Williams out, LaFrance back in for Kansas. Iowa State has only five field goals in the second half of this game. Goldberg, nine for nine at the line. 25 points in the contest today. The boxing one has been so effective. Tim Floyd's having a hard time figuring out how to get shots for the right people at the right time. Need a defensive stop. Kansas by four, 253 to play. Beach and guarding pass. Holberg chasing Gurley. Over, over Gurley as he's picked up the dribble now. Vaughn defended by Holloway. 14 on the shot clock. They want no foul now. Shot clock's down to 10. 
Long backs it out. He's going to take Holloway one on one. Five left in the shot clock. Nope. Gives it up to half. And Beecham got a block. Saved by LaFrentz. Taken away by Hoiberg. Iowa State down four. 2.20 to play. Nice defensive stop that time by the Cyclone. Oh, he could beat him to the hoop. Hoiberg for three. That's great. That's why you're all Big Eight. That's why you're all American. You rise when you need to. Big hoop. 28 for Hoiberg. One point lead. Kansas, two minutes to play. Roy Williams wants a 20 second timeout. You gotta like that as a shooter, do you? Well, the one thing, you, you, you never give up. And Hoiberg, when you're a senior, you want the ball all the time. He came off a pick, freed himself just for the moment. And when you're a good shooter, that's all you need, and he knocked it home. In all honesty, I have to think that his body and his legs are kind of tired, but his shooter's mind doesn't know that right now. Now, let's get back to Al Wallace in Studio 66 for an update. The shooter's mentality, I think you can, you were a great shooter. I think you can be tired in your times in the ball game in situations like that. You just don't even think about it. You're not tired right now. There is no tired in Fred Hoiberg. 29 points, 32 is his career high. He has hit five three-pointers. Kansas by one. Jock Vaughn. 15 seconds on the shot clock. 10 on the shot clock. Vaughn will back it out again. Holloway just needs to play straight up. Vaughn, rising jumper, no, rebound, put for it. And Meyer has it. The Cyclones to take the lead with a minute 29 to play as they try to force their way back into the lead. Kansas back, man to man. Gurley on Pearl Beecham. They're going to look. I think Fred Hoiberg needs to touch it. Somehow he needs the ball in his hand. He's got it on the double screen and a shot is oh. A three. Iowa State by two, a minute five to play. And Hoiberg has just reached back and jerked his Cyclones right back into this ballgame. And Kansas with a timeout, 57 seconds to play. You gotta love it. Oh, this is fun. Hilton Magic once again. They set a double pick for him, and he came off of it and knocked down a tray. Timeout, 57 seconds to play. Iowa State by two. Kansas has the ball. In Hilton Coliseum, when you have a horse, you ride him. They set a double pick for Fred Hoiberg, who knocks in his sixth three-pointer of the ball game. And this place is pandemonium, Fred. This is absolutely crazy. That's great. Hoiberg has matched his career high with 32 points. He has been the man down the stretch that has brought the Cyclones back from six down when it looked like they might have gone flat. And here we go again. The timeout by Roy Williams. Let's see what he comes up with out of the timeout. Oh, he fell down. Holloway knocks it loose. The Cyclones have it. 52 seconds to play. Iowa State by two. And Jopfon had slipped, and he only could save it from the going back court. Good play by Holloway to get the basketball. Now Kansas with great pressure on everybody. Mikalik has to dribble it, and he's not comfortable doing that. 35 seconds to play, 17 on the shot clock. Iowa State will have to shoot it, and if they miss it, they're going to have to defend it like the Dickens. Well, here's the man you want to have the ball. Let him create, let him make the play. Hoiberg from way outside on the rim and won't go. LaFrance with the rebound, 22 seconds to play. Kansas down two with the basketball. And a timeout taken by Roy Williams here. You know, probably not the shot for Hoiberg. I, I think he should have got it in there a little bit closer, draw some contact. Had some more time on the shot clock. Probably could have. Time out here. 18 and a half seconds to play. Iowa State by two, and it's Kansas basketball. Put it in Jock Vaughn's hands. Let's see what they run, try to do coming out. All the way on Vaughn. Jared Hass. Oh, they went for the win. Has it. Iowa State has the ball. They are fouled with seven seconds to play. And Mikuli, an 83% shooter who's had a bad day on the line, will walk there now. He is one for four at the line today. 
consider Iowa State one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country, 76%. They have good foul shooters. Boy, Williams is calling another timeout. The officials are conferring about something in midcourt. Jock Vaughn of Kansas is there. Now they're going to talk to the Iowa State assistants and to the head coach, Tim Floyd, about whatever decision they have made here. Well, if Tim doesn't look real happy whatever the decision was. I mean, he's got his arms crossed. They might be talking about time. They're going to check our monitor. A lot of times they talk about how much time is on the clock. Scottery McCartney from the Big A sitting there, our timeout coordinator. I think they're checking time, which is one of two things that you well, have to determine. And I know they want to think when the foul. Which foul did they call? Because there was a couple of pushes. They could have called it there or there. I mean, when did the whistle blow? And there's nine seconds. There's the hand up at 8.8. .8, and right now it looks like seven. So seven seconds on the clock. And they're, they're going to go back to 8.9 on the clock. And that's a good call. Nice review by the officials. It was. There's... The one thing is Meekly just steps up and makes a couple. It doesn't matter a whole bunch. So we're going to go back, it looks like, to 8-9 on the clock. The Big 8 officiating crew here today. Scott Thornley, Dwayne Smith, J.C. Linebach. J.C. Linebach is the one to call the meeting. That's Scott Thornley, the referee here. And they are going to take it back to 8-9. Mika Lake will go to the line with 8.9 seconds left. That's a good piece of officiating, right? Yeah, it is. And you mentioned... Bulo is only one of four from the line, but an 83% shooter. He's a senior. Hey, this is what you live for, college basketball. If you've played this long and been in this many ball games. Well, that was a nice throw, Fred. That was calm, cool, right down the middle. This is a huge point coming. It's a three-point game now. Kansas could still tie it. Lauren Meyer in a prayerful position <laughs> back behind midcourt. Lauren Meyer has, uh, has his... Pants folded. 8-9 point seconds to go. Iowa State by four. Jared has with a long off balance three. No. Rebound. It's game over. Holloway trying to dig it out of there. It's over. Iowa State wins it 69-65. The one at the scene in Hilton Coliseum. Boy, what a great win for Tim Floyd and his ball club. We thought they were done with three minutes to go. That young man is happy. The Big Eight is alive and well. There is a race in the Big Eight. As I